Hello, everyone. Uh, as an update to this Eclipse rocket mower project that's been delayed probably a year, I put together a video showing the work that I did on the carburetor, uh, drilling out the fuel pipe hole in the vacuum jet carburetor, and was fairly detailed with the steps involved of drilling the size and measuring things. Of course, the video was all screwed up. Uh, for some reason, the phone camera didn't work properly and everything screwed up on it. So I'm putting this together to put it up to show you what I've done. Let me get a couple numbers, hang on. So there's the old fuel pipe. If you remember, the screen was missing off the bottom of it. Uh, and it's a small, uh, small diameter fuel pipe. The diameter of the old fuel pipe is 123 thousandths. I got a replacement Briggs, new old stock, 293-700 fuel pipe. And that came with two little instruction cards. Obviously, it's got a zip code on it, so it's post-1963. Or somewhere in there when... ZIP was, the Zone Improvement Program was instituted. Anyway, the new fuel pipe is 185, the old pipe was 123. Those are in thousandths of an inch in diameter. Um, the hole in the carburetor, a number 31 drill fit in there. Slightly loose, but it fit in there, and that's 120 thousandths. So that would mean there would have been three thousandths press fit uh, on the old fuel pipe. The new, I drilled up to a number 14, which is 182 thousandths in diameter, and that gave me a two thousandths press fit. So it does work. I had showed all those steps in a video that got screwed up, but uh, unfortunately, it's lost to the cell phone hell camera gods. So let me show you a couple other things. So I've taken a fuel tank off and cleaned it. Uh, put nuts in it and ran it around. Uh, it's spotless on the inside. Um, I did put some paint on it, but the new fuel is a solvent and it just destroyed it. So I, I may repaint it at some point in the future. The only thing that I've done to this, the only part that I've put in here is that fuel pipe. Everything else is as it was when I first got it. The engine didn't run. Uh, the points were filthy on it. I popped the flywheel off, cleaned the points. I even have the old spark plug in it that came with it. I was going to replace it, but I cleaned it up and it works fine. I've changed the oil. Uh, there's a little haze in the oil. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's from. I did have to lap the valves. And the engine was off. Also, a rundown of the, of the mower itself, the clutch mechanism pivots on this pin, the control rod operates it. And I'll show you, I'm gonna start this up and I'll show you how this works. This was all frozen. Uh, I disassembled it, just de-rusted it, cleaned it, put it back together, lubricated it, it works fine. The belt is the original belt that was on it. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. It is old and it's dry, but it does function properly. There are a number of oil cups on this. I don't know if you can see, there's one down in here uh, on the, on the uh, reel shaft. The hubcaps, there's a little oil cup inside behind the hole in there on both sides. Um, you've also got a cup on the jack shaft, both inside be at the bearing block and on the outside of the bearing block. I have took the chain off and soaked it in some kerosene and then uh, lubricated it, it's fine. The sprockets are a little worn and the chain's a little worn, but when you're almost 70 years old, you'd be worn too. Another oil cup down on this, uh, on the mower shaft, and another oil cup inside the wheel. Beyond that, everything else is original. Um, I did adjust the height. It cuts awfully low. Remember, this is, this is a lawn mower, not a grass cutter. Um, real mowers are are uh, great in areas where you have flat level ground and not much undulation. 
I'm in Pennsylvania, and we've got hills and everything else. There's nothing, nothing really flat in eastern Pennsylvania. So uh, let me show you. I'm going to start this thing up. Uh, it's an absolute cold start. It's early in the morning. Um, so let's, we'll just keep rolling and see what happens. A little bit on the throttle. This does have the remote throttle. We'll give it a little bit on the throttle just to pull back on the, on it. Give it a little choke. Push, you push the choke in to choke it. And then give her a tug. And it wants to fire. We'll try it one more time. That's just the return clutch on it. So it fired right up. Like I said, it was an absolute cold start. There you go. So it sits and runs nice, it idles. There's a little bit of smoke. It probably could use rings. Um, the valves aren't the best. But I'm not going to run this daily. I'm not going to use this all the time. If I was going to use this, I would probably go through and rebuild the motor. Maybe even put a new piston in it. I don't know. One thing I've discovered is that when it's revving up pretty good, you can tell that the vein compressor or the vein, uh, vein governor works. Because if you hold your hand over the over the, you hear the change in RPM because the air gets sucked through this from the fan. air gets sucked through the fan and then blows across the top of the head to keep it cool. Really neat little mower. Really a lot of fun. There's the tag on the front of it. Hopefully that'll pick up as a, as a thumbnail. So let's show you what it does. I'm not going to cut any grass with it. We'll rev it up a little. I'll pull it back. You can see the gauge is up. You can see it engages everything. And that's not full throttle. I got to put the back on it. on it to set the top end and the idle. It idled very nicely, as you can hear. Um, so. Beyond that, it's been a fun little project. Uh, I've really enjoyed this. I've got to give a big shout out to 805 Road King. I know he sent some subscribers over to take a look at my stuff several years ago, uh, but a big shout out to him. If it wasn't for him, I'm sure that I would have not gotten into this. He rebuilt a similar engine. Check it out. Uh, I think it's rare lever start Briggs. He did a series of, of, of videos on it. Let me shut this down. One thing I've learned over the years, I learned it early when I was a kid, because we used to have a mower just like this. When you push the ground down, you hold it there. If you let go before it stops spinning, you can get zapped. And I can tell you that from experience. Anyway. Thanks a lot to 805 Road King and his buddy, small engine mechanic, Mike, and all the guys over there. Um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have picked this up. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It does cut grass, but I don't really have anything to cut it up. I don't have any place to cut right now. Uh, it does not like tall grass at all. I would suspect if you were using this in the eastern part of the country, you would be mowing your lawn at least twice a week uh, because once the grass gets up about an inch, uh, this thing struggles to get through it. I don't know if it's a factor of the engine or perhaps the, the knife edge is dull a little bit. But Anyway, that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry the video concerning the actual drilling and everything of the carburetor didn't come out, but there's nothing I can do about that. I might be able to pull some stills off. I don't remember if I took any or not. Anyway, take care, guys. Uh, 